Every flight should begin with a review of runway lengths and takeoff and landing distance data for our aircraft. Runway lengths are found on publications like the airport diagram. Here at Easton, runway 422 is 5,500 feet. We'll want to know our aircraft's required takeoff and landing distance and compare it to this runway to judge suitability. This isn't the end of the story though. The 5,500 feet shown on the airport diagram and also seen on publications like the sectional chart refers to the actual pavement length that makes up the runway, but not all pavement is created equal. We have a displaced threshold at the beginning of runway 22. No landings are allowed here, just taxis and takeoffs. We also have a small extension of the taxiway before the displaced threshold, with markings colored in yellow indicating that it's for taxiing only and not for beginning a takeoff run. This is likely here to protect the cars and trucks on Route 50 behind the airport from jet blast. The highway is just off the screen to the right, though you can see it running diagonally down below the field. With things like this in mind, the FAA provides more detailed runway length information based on what exactly we're planning on doing with the runway. This can be found in the chart supplement for most larger airports underneath the runway information section. These are the runway declared distances. Let's start by looking at the distances for runway 4. First, we have 5,500 feet of takeoff distance available, TOTA. It's listed second on the chart above, but we're mentioning it first. This is the available runway, beginning at the threshold of runway 4 and including the displaced threshold at the other end. It does not include the taxiway that's in alignment with the runway. If this wasn't actually part of the taxiway, but was a stopway, used in emergencies for overruns, indicated with yellow chevrons, this distance would be included in the TOTA. Now, this displaced threshold is 325 feet long. This information can also be found in the chart supplement. There's typically a reason why the runway is displaced. Here, it's likely for the highway again, which is probably taken into account in the airport's runway design standards too. This is why the next length, the takeoff run available, TORA, is only 5,175 feet. It starts again from the threshold of runway 4 and goes up to the threshold of 22. TORAs can include the entire physical length of the runway, including displaced thresholds, but the decision has been made here to exclude that part from the length. The next length is a bit esoteric for general aviation. It's called the Accelerate Stop Distance Available. As the name implies, it's the distance available for an aircraft, typically a larger jet, to accelerate, abort the takeoff, and come to a stop. At larger airports, this is typically longer than the physical length of the runway, especially when a stopway or a resting service is available for overruns. Here though, we have to take Route 50 into consideration again. There's a runway safety area, which isn't shown here or in the airport diagram, which requires a certain amount of ground, both part of the runway and not, that allows for emergency runway excursions in a safe manner. Route 50 is obviously not part of that runway safety area, so our ASDA only goes 4,775 feet. Similarly, the landing distance available only goes 4,775 feet. Note that a legal landing can be made up to the very beginning of the threshold for runway 4 and continued all the way to the physical end of the runway, rolling onto the taxiway at the end. But the declared landing distance available is only 4,775 feet. This is what we should use when doing our landing performance calculations. If it wasn't for these constraints, it's easy to envision the LDA running the full length of the runway, 5,500 feet. Let's flip over to the other side and look at runway 22. Again, the very beginning part is just an extension of taxiway alpha. It's not part of the physical length of the runway, and we should just pretend that pavement isn't even there. The takeoff distance available will be the physical length of the runway again, including the displaced threshold, 5,500 feet. Similarly, the takeoff run available is also 5,500. We aren't squeezed on the departure end of 22 to the left of the screen like we are with the highway. The accelerate stop distance available is also 5,500. That runway safety area provides plenty of buffer past the runway to allow us to use the entirety of the pavement to get stopped. And finally, the LDA here is 5,175 feet. And this is simply because of that displaced threshold of 325 feet. Landings can't be made anywhere before that spot. In IFR flight, LDAs are published at the top of approach plates. For runway 4, we see runway landing distance of 4,775 feet. And for runway 22, it's 5,175 feet. Take note that you shouldn't derive your own landing distance available by taking the published runway length and subtracting the displaced threshold. That wouldn't work for runway 4, as we've shown. 
It's a nice idea and your head is in the right place, but there's other factors that aren't readily shared with us that play into determining these distances.